I'm at the Linden Train Show today, okay. starting at episode number 58 of my South Mountain Branch Update Series. There's a couple people behind me just happen to be in the frame, so we're just going to leave them there because, you know, people don't seem to mind being on camera these days. As you can see, the 4th Division Fremo layout needs quite a bit of scenery and some other work as well. As we watch my train roll around one of the end loops of this giant dog bone layout. And what do you know? Here comes one of my friends, Alex. Hi Alex, how you doing? We've been doing a lot of testing and adjustment of the layout in preparation for the setup at the Tacoma Holiday Food and Gift Festival at the Tacoma Dome the uh, 20th through the 23rd. So back home from the show now and tonight I'm out here looking at the uh, diverging route that would lead to the uh, grain uh, elevator here. And um, I got to thinking that, that maybe what I should do is put a, uh, a pocket back here <clears throat> for the, um, for whatever locomotive is, is switching the facility. And that maybe uh, with the yard that's going to be there, I could then uh, have some uh, a diesel fueling facility there, so that the uh, a yard engine the engines could pull into the yard, get maybe some sand, some diesel, and uh, so I'm thinking about that. And I thought, well, if I do that, I have to put another turnout right here, and of course, <clears throat> I just carved out the other day the uh, the cork for that, of course. So if I do that, I'm going to have to change that somehow. And then, of course, it's where I'm putting the turnout. Uh, turnout's already, I've got an a left one already built. I could build another one, but I can always build another one. Um, but anyway, I was sitting there and I looked at this and it puts it way out here, like... I don't think you guys can see that. It's like a couple, couple inches out there. And I thought, well, that's not going to work out very well. So um, I'm going to have to, if I do that, I'm going to have to squish this one together so that it's a tighter, tighter crossover because this track goes down there into the grain elevator. I don't want it that far out. It'll take up too much room for what I'm going to use for a yard later. So... Um, yeah, if I do that, I'm going to have to shorten that and I'm probably going to cut out some of the cork. I had just recently glued down here, of course, uh, to see if I can make it fit that better. Um, anyway, so let's see. I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking. So I cut this turn out so that it would lay in the mode or in a way that I want it to right there. Can't really tell the angle that I'm going for there, but that's okay. And then I trimmed this quick stick and stacked it. Now you really can't see this there, but it's gonna kind of match up with the, the ties on the other side here. And so we should have a pretty good route there. Okay, so now I've cut those ties down and the switch down, and now you get a better idea of what I was talking about. Now I need to go in and fix the cork. So I've cut back the cork, and then I added some more cork so that I could lay this turnout in here and have it in that, that spot. Now, of course, that's not in the right spot. I have to wait for glue to dry. I took a couple of incline starters and 
cut them thinner, stretch them out a little bit to actually make them a little less of a grade. And I put some more cork uh, on the end, this end of the turnout so that it would go further before it actually started sloping down. Make it less likely to put stress in the actual turnout. And then um, there's the other one down there. So <clears throat> once I get those covered with some plaster cloth or, you know, maybe I, I might use some uh, like masking tape or something to do that. I'm, I hadn't thought of that, but I, I'm thinking I might try that just to kind of fill it in so that when I go to do the scenery over the top of it, I'm not wasting a bunch of, piling a bunch of scenery in for no reason. Um, and that will get the downgrade for the uh, engine pocket and the um, downgrade to the grain elevator that you see over there taken care of. I'm getting pretty excited. I can't wait to run my first grain train down here and switch it out. Now the glue is dried on the risers. So I'm going over it with some blue tape to kind of help fill the gaps. And then I'm just going to paint it brown like that. It's a little darker than the bottom, uh, but it doesn't really matter in this regard. As long as it's brown and not you know, strikingly blue. I could probably get some tape of a different color, but um, I've done this before and the, the paint actually does cover it pretty good. So uh, I figured why go out and buy an extra roll of tape that I probably won't use for other stuff. <laughs> Doing a little track testing, but I'm gonna have to put feeders on the, uh, on this industrial line, so um, this engine will probably die in the crossover and, uh, but I want to see if I can get, yeah, there it goes. I want to see if I can get, uh, you know, the rolling stock to run through it smoothly. I, I pushed, I pushed it through with my hands, um, a couple minutes ago. That looks pretty good. Before I can test this further, I've got to, I've got to run another bus for that track. And actually, since both of the two in internal ones here are industrial track, um, I need to run that bus for both of those actually um, over here. So might as well get on that next. Okay, I mounted one of these locking lever connectors to... Uh, the bottom of the layout so that I can run the power that that stretches over from the uh, DCC system over here and branch off from here to the other side where the lower yard and the grain elevator are basically sitting. Um, I may end up at doing another branch off for the paper mill that's going to be on this side. We'll Worked my way around the corner in the peninsula here and laid out some more glue after I drew some lines to where the track is going to go for the next part of the grain terminal trackage. I thought I might get this line complete, but I had to build another turnout. This time it's a number six right. And that slowed me down enough to where I've run out of time for today. So maybe I'll get this set up tomorrow. We can actually watch a train run through the whole darn thing. Well, folks, it isn't going to be a full-blown grain train, but we are going to get to see a train entering the line from the uh, paper mill side of the peninsula. And it just went through two number eights, and it's going to go through the number six that will diverge to the paper mill. And 
one of my cars apparently is imitating a flat wheel. So, I suppose I should fix that. And it'll be headed up there to the crossover. But I gotta stop this because I'm not sure which way I have that crossover set right now. I gotta admit, that senior is too big. Okay, so you've just seen 1002 pull the short grain train through the turnout that I've installed here, that I built and installed. And uh, I got a little bit of a goofy curve going on here, but that, you know, comes off this number eight, swoops down. Um, but I think that'll be okay. Not all industrial lines look, you know, super well laid. Speaking of not being well laid, we got this track piece over here just hanging off the end of that other turnout. I should say placed, it's not actually connected. I suppose I could flip that building around and make a temporary uh, industry to switch. Hmm. Until I get an actual paper plant built. Hmm. I noticed that the throw bar on this turnout right here wasn't uh, wasn't moving sufficiently. I had the 025 piano wire on the tortoise. I took it off, put some 032 that I had laying around, and it seems to work a lot better. So it's moving right along there. So I drilled a hole in that bench work so the feeder for the frog could come through. And I've also got to connect the tortoise and those two feeders to the uh, track bus that's on the, uh, that's one farther away there. So I'm going to work on that next. As I said, I've got quite a few, quite a few little things I still need to do to the, uh, to the, tr the track over here to get it uh, fully installed. But right now it actually works without doing some of those things. Um, I just have to move the tortoises manually and that's not really that much fun. So I'll be getting the LCC stuff set up on here pretty soon. Going to put a couple of spikes in place so this turnout is set. So, so I put a snaps 2.0 on this tortoise. It happens to be one of the new ones, so I can do that. Um, and then I split the, the bus after I moved it over and uh, made it so that it that I can reach the, the feeders with that and the tortoise. And so that's all set. That's one down. I still got to do the, the other one for the crossover. Thanks for watching episode number 58. Until next time, stay safe and have fun with your trains out there.